On Friday, anti-oil environmentalists poured tomato soup on Van Gogh's sunflowers, stating that we need to stop using oil to fund our economy, while in the same sentence say that we need to lower the cost of living. Empty-headed statements like this are the reasons that so few people take the side of environmentalists in politics. The goal of these activists isn't wrong, but generally speaking, environmentalists have a massive marketing problem, and they're never going to get their point across unless they stop terrorizing our cities and our culture. My name is Chris, and this is The Think Report. Environmentalism is a good thing, and we need to care more about our environment. However, in this episode, we'll take a look at how environmentalists need to stop saying that we're killing the environment. They need to stop using terrorism to convince the population to be more proactive. And finally, we'll dive into their biggest problem, their connection to socialism. The message about killing the planet is untrue. The planet started as a molten ball of magma and metal and rock and gases, and it evolved into what we have today. So it's not true that the planet won't be fine. It will be totally fine. We may not be fine, but the planet will be completely fine. However, there are still strong arguments for environmentalism. We need to consider human sustainability And we need to also consider the beauty that we're losing if we're tearing down forests and polluting rivers and lakes. These are both excellent arguments for caring about the environment. For example, should we cut down the next 300-year-old western red cedar? It'll have no impact on the sustainability of human life, but they are pretty awesome to look at. Should we drive cars less? They do make air quality pretty terrible for humans. But the idea that we need to stop doing it because we're killing the planet is untrue. Let's take a look at using terrorism in the name of environmentalism. I'll start with a quote by Nietzsche, which I was recently made aware of. When you force a person to change their mind about you, they count the effort this entails against you. I think this quote is very important in this context, especially when these environmentalists are defacing artifacts that most of Western society thinks very highly of in one regard or another. Even though most people would be aligned with saving the environment, No one is going to take your side if you're destroying things that they care about. It would be like saying to a commuter, you should take the train to save the environment, and then following up by slashing his or her tires. The criminal act of slashing someone's tires would overshadow your message, which is the same in this case too. The crime of vandalizing a beloved painting worth hundreds of millions of dollars that people care about overshadows their message. People aren't thinking about the environment. They're thinking about how these two bozos need to be imprisoned and made to pay for the restoration costs of the painting. And people care about the environment. According to a Pew Research study, 72% of people are concerned that global climate change will harm them personally at some point in their lifetime. And 80% of them are willing to make changes to how they live and work. The problem is that no one knows what changes to make. Everything you do is a cost-benefit analysis, meaning that when you buy something, you're analyzing the money output versus the benefit you get in return. Or if you're performing a task, you're analyzing the time it costs you versus the benefit you get in return. The problem is that we don't know what the cost-benefit is for the environment. If you stop driving to work, what's the benefit? If you go vegan, what's the benefit? If you could start recycling more, What's the benefit? We don't know. But environmentalists are asking people to make changes without communicating the impact of the change. If I make the change, is it the equivalent of saving a dolphin in the Pacific? Who knows? The last point we can talk about is environmentalism's connection to socialism. Top priorities for environmentalists include the reduction of fossil fuel usage, recycling plastic and other materials, and the preservation of forests and wildlife habitats. However, for better or worse, there's no money in achieving these goals, which means that governments and charities are the ones investing in these priorities, not businesses. We know that conservative governments are slow and favor capitalism. We know liberal governments have classically found a home in the center, And socialist governments are the ones to expand social services in government reach. 
knowing this, obviously environmentalists who want governments to achieve their goals must align with social governments, since they're the most likely to buy in. However, most people aren't socialist. In fact, in the U.S. and Canada, calling someone a socialist is almost a four-letter word. Almost everyone cares about the environment, and most people are concerned about it. But the socialist stigma that comes with calling yourself an environmentalist is a problem that environmentalists need to respond to. Think about that. If you're interested in donating to an environmental cause, consider EcoJustice. EcoJustice has a five-star rating on charity intelligence with best practices in financial transparency and above-average accountability to donors. Its overhead costs are 30%, meaning that every dollar donated, 70%, 70 cents goes to the cause. Founded in 1991, EcoJustice uses legal action to defend nature and fight climate change. Through its legal cases, EcoJustice aims to establish laws and rulings that protect environmental rights. It has fought a total of 103 cases, of which 54 were victorious. EcoJustice groups its advocacy into three main programs, climate, healthy communities, and nature. You can donate by going to ecojustice.ca.